This is Marketplace. Pajamas, old dresses. Oh my gosh. Where do all your old clothes really end up? Ultimately, it is going to end up in the landfill. We follow the trail around the world. The high cost of fast fashion. This is your Marketplace. I'm here checking out some of the biggest fashion chains in the world, but I'm not shopping for new clothes. I'm actually trying to get rid of some of my old ones. So these were my all-time favorite sweatpants from college. These, I washed them and they totally shrunk. These were also super cheap. This is just like an old t-shirt. It was black at one point in its life. Some retailers are on a mission. They want your unwanted clothes. And some are competing with charities for it. There's a new bin in town, and the message is clear. Don't throw old clothes in the garbage. Dump them here. They'll take curtains. They'll take jeans. They'll even take your old underwear. Drop off your old clothes and get a coupon to save money when you buy new ones. But before I part with my old clothes, I've got a few more questions. These bins sure make us all feel good, but are they doing as much good as we think? Look at this! Look at these bags! Most of us are like the Bredens and the Palmas in Markham, Ontario. Somehow, we end up with too many clothes. Emily, what's in here? Old clothes that are too small for me. They purge a few times a year, normally dropping their haul in a charity bin. Whoa! Stuff like these have like holes in them. This isn't just a pile of clothes. It's now a pile of textile waste. And we want to show the kids just how big the problem really is. Are you guys ready to go inside and see what happens to all those clothes that you donate? Yes. All right, let's go inside. Go on in, take a look. Whoa. Clothes! Clothes? That's clothes. Clothes! Do you see that? Oh my gosh. Clothes. Yeah. Very, very big pile. And get this. All of this is what's left over. The stuff no one wants. The stuff that thrift stores can't sell. All those clothes you guys piled up yesterday, this is where it can end up. Oh, it's a lot of clothes. It wasn't what I was expecting to see. One warehouse, more than 200,000 pounds of textile waste each week. And that's just from in and around Toronto. Across the country, we've got nine other locations similar to this one. The last year or two years, probably a 15 to 20 percent growth in the overall volume of textiles that are coming in. Tawny Collin is the head of donations for Salvation Army Canada. So how do you think fast fashion has impacted this? All of this. <laughs> it's, had, it's had a massive effect and all of that stuff has to go somewhere. The dads of these two families, Michael Palma and Norman Breton, can't believe it. Their coats or boots might be okay, but they want something new. If they need it or they want, there's a big question. A lot of times they want stuff, but they don't need it. Still, we can't seem to get our hands on fast fashion fast enough. Cheap, trendy, disposable clothes. And we're even bragging about it. I ended up coming out with buckle clothes. We're all buying too much, 400% more since the 1980s. The quality isn't all that great, but the prices are fantastic. But not all of our old clothes make it to the donation bin. Most of it, 85%, ends up in landfill. In North America, it's estimated to be at least 25 billion pounds a year. In Canada alone, imagine a mountain three times the size of Toronto's Rogers Centre Stadium, where they don't biodegrade easily because many are made with fabrics that can't be broken down. Releasing chemicals and dyes into our rivers, soil. That's part of the reason why fashion is one of the world's top polluters. So in the last few years, some of the biggest names in the business, Levi's, Nike, Adidas, Zara, have started recycling programs. All retailers with donation bins in stores calling out for your old garments. 
but none go as far as H&M. They'll take anything, jeans, curtains, even underwear. Just check out their ads. The thing that you never wore, oh, this and this and that. The thing with the color that wasn't your color, bring it on. This is one of H&M's latest ad campaigns. Let's cut your jeans into pieces and make new jeans out of them. Cut your jeans into pieces and make new jeans out of them. With your help, we literally turn your old clothes into new garments. We literally turn your old clothes into new garments. Garments in the worst condition can be transformed into insulation material or textile fibers woven into cloth, reborn as fashionable new clothes of every conceivable kind. What do you think about recycling clothes? I think that's amazing. That's a great plan. When we're talking about recycling clothes, what does that make you think is happening to this stuff? I think maybe it's like you like refurbish the clothes and like get them to look new again. What do you think happens to that stuff? Is it gonna recycle to make new clothes from the old clothes? Let's shred it into fibers and stitch it into something new. The only thing we will not do is waste it. Bold recycling claims. They sound great, but are they really? To try to find out, we head to New York City, one of the fashion capitals of the world. With jackets, as you always have to check the lining. To meet Elizabeth Klein, an anti-fast fashion crusader. Because of what she knows, she only wears used clothes. It's made her a pro at assessing cast-offs. On a coat, the first thing you would do is like make sure Zippers, zippers were especially fast fashion, like a lot of the fasteners will just break and ship really quickly. We show her H&M's marketing and ask her what she thinks about making new clothes out of your old ones. Let's shred it into fibers and stitch it into something new. The reality is that currently only about 1% of clothing is actually recycled in the very literal sense of the word. 1%. 1%. 1% is yeah. recycled. If you're talking about recycling in terms of taking fibers and breaking them down and turning them back into new fibers, it's 1%. Why is it so hard to just take my old shirt and turn it into a new one? Why can't you just do that? A lot of our clothes are made out of blended fibers. So, um, you know, maybe this is acrylic and wool and right. cotton mixed together. Maybe my tights are cotton and elastane. That makes it very difficult to recycle. The other challenge is that when you recycle cotton and wool, it um, diminishes the quality of that material. So it weakens the cotton and wool strand and gives you a lesser product. Bottom line, the technology just isn't there yet. It's way too expensive and too time consuming to make new clothes from old ones. It's also a more skeptical side of me that knows that the reason why H&M is focusing on textile recycling is because it's an easy sustainability win for them. It doesn't involve them changing their production model at all uh, to collect clothes and make sure that they get a second life. So it doesn't make the fast fashion system any more sustainable. Experts agree fast fashion needs to change if we really want to make a difference. Remember when fashion had four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall? Now, the trends change almost every day. Here's how the Swedish clothing giant CEO explains it. We have new garments coming into the stores uh, almost every day. So if you go to an H&M store today and come back two days later, you will always find something new. H&M salespeople tell us new clothes come in every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. That works out to half a billion products a year. And it's why H&M's recycling campaign makes Claudia Marseilles so mad. It really is a, a form of, of greenwashing. She's the head of Markham, Ontario's waste programs, one of the few Canadian cities to actually ban textiles from landfills. In order for the fast fashion outlets to recycle what they make, it would take 12 years to recycle what they sell in 48 hours. Like it's just, it's just, so that what sort of tells me it's really more about foot traffic, marketing, greenwashing than about really addressing the, the broken business model of fast fashion. We ask H&M to come on camera and talk about their recycling program. 
they decline, assuring us they don't want to encourage a throwaway attitude. Their clothes are good quality and made to last. And they are working towards a business model where eventually all their clothes can be recycled. At least they're trying? Yes, uh, well, but they're the cause of the problem. So fast fashion retailers, their business model is the problem. They're making too much, they're selling it too cheap, it's disposable clothing. Doing a bit of back-end recycling and a bit of commercials really doesn't address that issue. And as some customers, one of the things they love most about the program, it's the discount, that incentive to keep buying. I put in a bin and then they gave me the discount. I saw it, I was like, oh snap. You know, um, it's a way to like, you know, like um, help me and help them at the same time. And what do you mean when you say help you and help someone else? Um, help me by, you know, like saving money and help them by providing a free clothing for them. We just chuck it in the bin and they did offer like a $5 discount. H&M might be collecting your old clothes, more than 55,000 tons so far. But if they're barely making new clothes from your donations, where do they all go? These shoppers have a theory. Where do you think those clothes go that you put in H&M? Um, they probably go to like people who need them, probably like shelters or like other places that can use the clothes. Probably give it for free or something to like the people that need it. Where do you think that stuff goes? What do you think happens to Hopefully to just some needy people. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I um, still want to be fashionable. Many of us think our old clothes are given to the less fortunate. Wrong. And maybe you're telling yourself that to feel better about buying more too. Well, Klein coined a term for this. Okay. What's the clothing deficit myth? <laughs> so the clothing deficit myth is um, the idea that when we give clothes to charity, they're going to go to someone locally in our community in need. Um, but in the era of fast fashion, um, there's far more unwanted clothes than there are people in need. The Salvation Army knows all about that. Remember, this is all the stuff they can't sell at their stores. So what do they do with all these leftovers? They sell it to a middleman. And the retailers do the same thing with all your donations too. In Canada, H&M gives the money it makes off your donations to UNICEF. Here's the thing, all textiles are worth money. The stuff that's in really rough shape is shredded for painter's cloths or insulation, for example, then sold. But the majority of all donated clothes are shipped overseas to developing countries and they're sold there too, not donated or given to needy people. And if you think that means it's not going to end up in landfills, think again. We follow the trail of your old t-shirts around the world. The black stripes here are from Canada. You can't afford to miss this trip. This is your marketplace. The real deal on your marketplace. We love our clothes, now so cheap, you can make a different statement every day. These things are $3, $5. But they come with a huge cost. Part of the reason why some fast fashion chains, like H&M, say they've got recycling programs like this. The Earth simply cannot bear so many clothes ending their lives as waste. H&M has a far better answer. But we learn less than 1% of the world's used clothes are turned into new ones. The majority of those donations from retailer and charity bins are bailed and sold overseas. This is Nairobi, Kenya, the country at the top of the list when it comes to buying your old clothes. Kenya is one of Canada's best customers. In a given year, they buy more than $20 million worth of our old clothes. All the rest with the black stripes. The black stripes here are from Canada. These are a variety of kids' clothing. This one is a jacket, ladies t-shirts. Mayina Andrew is a used clothing importer. People from Canada and America, they are actually a bit uh, huge. Scenes like this aren't isolated. 
you'll see them all over Africa, South and Central America. A lot of this is stuff Canadians donated for free, only for it to be sold here, for profit, to vendors like Alice Nia and Sorora Anunda, who brings it to her local market. They call the clothes Matumba. <laughs> oh no, that one, it's just um, a nickname. We gave it, Tumba means old in our culture. Nearly 13,000 kilometers away. But take a closer look, and there they are. The names you know. AEO, Zara, Adidas, H&M. The way we open pearls, we know the plants where there is new clothes, especially those which come from Canada. But Andrew notices many of the clothes are low quality, tough to sell. We just dump them. If people don't buy them, we just dump them. They do go in the piles of garbage. Very many of them. He says this happens regularly, right behind the market, discarding and burning clothes Canadians don't want, and neither do Kenyans. Sometimes they pack even very old items. They can even pack items that are not even good and they, they end up dumping them in, Ke in Africa or in Kenya. Yeah, we burn them and it is a loss to us because we have already bought them. All those popular brands in the crowded markets, Elizabeth Klein has seen them too. She's been to Kenya. There are a lot of different companies around the world that are working on textile recycling in the truest sense of the word, but it's really in the, in the very early stages, whether it stays in the United States or if it ends up in Africa. Ultimately, it is going to end up in the landfill. We tell H&M about this Kenyan market and all the fires. They say its middleman, ICO, which handles pickup and distribution of their bins, has really high standards. But they are still working on building a better tracking system so this doesn't keep happening. Dumping is always cheaper. It's always the cheaper option. There's only one solution. The producer of the clothing is responsible cradle to grave. So they make the t-shirt, they sell the t-shirt, the t-shirt comes back, they have to recycle that t-shirt. They can't put it in a third world country. So as South Africa is concerned, we banned second-hand clothing. When a country survives on second-hand things, second-hand clothes, it means there's something wrong with that system. Threatening the survival of the local textiles industry. And now many of those countries are fighting back. East African countries sent the world a message recently. They don't want our hand-me-downs and tried to ban them. Their government said it was destroying their own textile market. Second-hand clothes are quite cheap and any manufactured uh, textile would not be able to compete with them. And despite everything you just watched, Klein says H&M Group is a front runner in sustainability efforts. Compared to other brands, they are leaders. I don't know what that says about the rest of the fashion industry, that a fast fashion chain is at the top of that list. It's just know that your textile waste is an environmental issue. Textile waste and landfills is one of the fastest growing categories of waste. And it's such an easy thing to do something about. So what should you do with all your old clothes? The answer's coming right up. Do you have a story you want us to investigate? Write to us, marketplace at cbc.ca. The high cost of fashion on your marketplace. Do you ever impulse buy? Absolutely. What was the last thing you bought that now you see and you're like, what was I thinking? Clothing, always. On average, we buy almost 70 clothing items every year. That means we're buying new clothes every week. What'd you buy? Um, a lot of stuff. Did you need anything? No. Just looking around and you yes, bought a few I things. I bought a lot of things, leggings, shirts, socks, underwear. Most of these styles will end up trashed in landfill. Fast fashion is a big part of the problem, but we don't have to buy in. So this is 50% polyester, 50% cotton. It's really hard to separate those fibers and make new stuff. Okay. Do you know how many liters of water goes into making a single pair of jeans? Almost 4,000 wow. liters. Ooh. 
It's crazy. And sometimes just seeing the waste makes a difference. These families swear they'll change their ways. They want to look at the cute things, the things that look good, but not necessarily good quality. We have to, we try to teach them to use their stuff until it's worn out. Speaking of waste and consumption, I've still got my bag of clothes to get rid of. I don't really know where the best place is to go with my stuff. And I think people at home who see this are probably gonna have the same question. Some people like uh, to swap the clothes. Okay. So that's the first line of defense. If it's in really good condition, you could take them to a consignment store. You can also donate to a, a reputable um, charity. Do your research on, on, on who you're giving your clothing to. Don't buy so much. So bottom line, when it comes to your used clothing, don't throw it away. Try and give it to somebody who can actually use it. Hey girls, does anybody need a t-shirt? No, you sure? Black dress pants, hardly ever wore them. This is cool, right? Zipper in the back. <laughs> I think we're okay. Any chance you want to return yours and take these ones? No, They're thank you. They're a size small. I, I wore them like twice. No, thank you. No? No. Do any of you need a pair of pajama pants or know someone who might want these? T-shirt? I'll take them. I'll take them. Any chance you want a pair of Levi's? Sure. Size six, me? Awesome. awesome. There you go. And they won't go to landfill this way? No. Maybe there is no perfect solution to this complicated problem, but if there's something I've learned throughout this process, it's that there is something I can do. And for me, that will mean buying less. A special year-long marketplace investigation. We go undercover inside nursing homes. I was shouting my head off and they didn't come out. Families fighting for better care. My poor mother. Has long-term care reached a crisis point? Oh, we're way past that. I think we've been in crisis for years. If this happened in a daycare, that daycare would be shut down in five minutes. How to fight for better care on the next Marketplace.